Hello everyone, this is Pastor Britt Strahecker, and welcome to episode 35 of Closer to God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, each day is a new opportunity in our working relationship with you. Help us to draw closer to you and help us to get into a deep personal relationship with you so that our faith and trust placed in you will pay off dividends and help us to produce fruit that will glorify your name here on this earth. Help us today to look at your word and glean some new teaching from it so that not only will we get to know you better, we will also grow as individuals. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, we're in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, and we're starting today at verse 22. This is going to be an account about Jesus healing a blind man. And there's an important lesson for us to learn from this account uh, that may not seem apparent when we first read through this, but we're going to discuss it afterwards. So let's see what happens in this episode. And I'm going to go ahead and read from verse 24 all the way up to verse 26. So, you know, there's only, a couple, I'm sorry, 22 to 26, 22 to 26. So there's only a couple verses here. So I'm going to read the whole thing and then we'll discuss it. When they arrived at Bethsaida, some people brought a blind man to Jesus and they begged him to touch and heal the man. Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. Then, spitting on the man's eyes, he laid his hands on him and asked, Can you see anything now? The man looked around. Yes, he said. I see people, but I can't see them very clearly. They look like trees walking around. Then Jesus placed his hands over the man's eyes again. As the man stared intently, his sight was completely restored, and he could see everything clearly. Jesus sent him home, saying, Don't go back to the village on your way home. So, kind of a, a, a strange happening here. We have Jesus once again amongst the crowds, and people bring a blind man to him and beg him to touch the man and heal him. And what does Jesus do? He doesn't do it right there on sight. He takes the man away to a private place so he can have a one-on-one -on -one situation with this man because there's a couple reasons why he does this. Number one, he doesn't want his ministry to become a sideshow healing event where all he does is heal and perform miracles. You know, that's uh, you know, he's not there to perform miracles. He's there to bring people's attention back on God and to bring their attention on the fact that they are sinners and they need to repent from their sins. So whenever we struggle with an issue in our life or we have something that plagues us in our life, uh, that's a time for us to go away by ourselves with the Savior and try to hash things out between us and the Savior, not in a public place where other people are watching us or not making a spectacle of what we're dealing with and going to the Lord with it. It's, it's a personal time with Jesus where we can go away with him and seek out his instruction, his healing and answer to prayer so that we can bring the issue before him and seek out help from him and sometimes our troubles our struggles our afflictions whatever it is we're taking to the Lord run very deep in our life and sometimes we can't just go to the Lord once and be done and be healed and everything changes no since we're creatures of habit and it's hard for us to break some habits and when something becomes a part of our life or if we are, are not strong enough to resist a certain temptation in our life, it may take multiple times to go to the Lord and seek his healing and his instruction and his answers to our prayers in order for us to get through it. And that's what happened here with this blind man. His sight was so impaired that it took not once, but two times of Jesus laying his hands upon him before he could see clearly again. And that should speak volumes to us because sometimes when we're so blinded by our sins, uh, it's hard for us to see things the way Jesus wants to see them. You know, it's hard for us to step aside and take a look at our sin and see it for what it is and sometimes it takes multiple sessions with the Lord before we can clearly see what is afflicting us in our life in order to enable the Lord to heal us you see this man's friends brought him out of faith to Jesus so that he could heal him and we got to go in faith 
to Jesus when we are seeking healing or answers for our problems and situations. And sometimes it may be one time that we talk to him and he can resolve it right then and there. And there's no doubt in my mind he could do that. But we have to understand there's a human element here, namely us. And sometimes once isn't enough with the Savior. We may not have to go to him once, twice, three times, maybe 500 times or more. It depends on how deeply entrenched this problem is or this sin is in our life. And, you know, one time with the Savior uh, could heal us and could correct the problem. But since we're human beings and we're not strong enough to overcome some of our weakest areas, we need his help multiple times before we are actually cured from whatever it is that is ailing us. So that's an important lesson for us to glean from this particular event that happened during Jesus' ministry. You know, we have to understand that we need to keep our eyes focused on Christ and we need to see things from his perspective if we truly want to be healed of our deepest aff afflictions you know and like I said it may take multiple times for that to happen before everything comes into place that we can be healed and also we have to make that time personal with the Lord not a public spectacle where we can make uh, a name for ourselves well, oh look how God has healed me or look how God has done this for me you know it's important that we do share praise and thanksgiving for the things that God does but we cannot make it about ourselves we should not be the focus of what happened here all the glory belongs to God and whenever we give praise and thanksgiving we need to make sure that we're praising God and putting people's focus on him and not on ourselves you know so if the Lord takes multiple times with you and does eventually heal you notice he tells the guy don't go back into the village on your way home what he's saying here is look don't go out there and say, look, I can see again. You guys know I couldn't see. My friends brought me to the Lord. He took me aside and look, I can see again. You know, again, Jesus does not want to be a sideshow. He wants people's attention focused solely on God. And he wants people to realize that their sins sometimes run very deep and they need to seek out forgiveness and repent from their sins in order to repair their relationship with God. And that was the sole purpose of his ministry for him to make it along the road of his walk in his ministry to the cross at Calvary so that he could pay our sin debt in full and take our place when he took on the death penalty for our sins. So you see how this all works out and you see that we got to be careful not to just glean over or glance over any particular section in the Bible because there's something important to be learned from everything that's written in God's holy word and here we have learned something that is very true about all human beings and about ourselves and about our relationship with God and how we can seek his assistance and healing even with our deepest afflictions and problems so Hopefully that will reach many of us. I know it's reached me today in just reading this and sharing this with you. So uh, until next time, remember, nothing in this world is more important than the love of Jesus Christ. I'll talk to you soon.